Oh, whoa. I am Cordled. Welcome to my all-encompassing Guardians of the Rift guide. This guide is not only viable for solo play, but can also be used as a mass strategy for worlds. No matter your setup and your start, your setup will be able to use this strategy with or without chisel to be able to maintain a high rate of rune generation as well as experience as well as point generation. Since this point generation technique is going to utilize mass imbue along with combination rune strats through items and through necklaces, although this one has only got four charges left. The strategy will work the same and start the same on every single game and will then change strategy based on whether or not you have a higher runecrafting level, whether you have a number of pouches of which either your maximum or colossal, on whether you have unlocked the abyssal needle from your rewards, and whether or not you will be making use of spellbook swaps for the use of combination rune creation. No matter your strategy, you will always start by mining as much as you can until the timer hits 40 seconds remaining. I usually prefer to be anywhere between 40 to 45, but even if you leave exactly the pit, not this area itself, but you're at the top of the pit into the play zone at 40 seconds, it does not matter. It also does not matter what number of guardian fragments that you get. However, I do suggest that if you're going to be making use of the full setup and that you do not have a rock body, you do make use of a charged celestial ring. Coming up in 45 seconds, see if you'll be able to get close to 120. It's usually the dream amount. From here, we will be simplifying some basic terminology so that people will be able to follow along, even if they are using this as an audio guide. Guardians are doors, cells, and their pits are known as gates, and the actual guardians themselves, the essence guardians, are the guardians, or guards. At 40 seconds, you will first put up the center gate, the main gate, and you will then make a uh, elemental guardian. You'll then put up the next gate between nature and fire, and then you will run back for your third weak cell and wait for the doors to open. You will then see what door opens, and based on that door, you will choose which cell you will be going for. On doors where there is no weak where there is no strong or overcharged cell options, you simply take the strongest cell that you can get, craft that cell, and run back out to place it. On this rotation, we had ourselves one like one overcharged and then everything else weak. So we simply make the guardian. And from here, we're going to grab another weak cell. And you're going to be prepared for what opens next. On this rotation, I don't really trust these portals. We actually got lucky and we could have been able to take that to take the blood, but it's okay. Once the portal opens, assuming that you have everything going well, you go in, mine to your maximum. Through this time period, you might notice that your first weak cell guardian has died. Don't worry, that's normal. trying to get the nature here i will not get the nature here that's unfortunate that's okay mine out to your maximum wait until you get your next door rotation you can choose to either dump your maximum here now which i will do or hold your maximum we also got lucky we got ourselves a portal talisman for this we will then put up another guard then you will craft at least a single normal inventory of essence. Wait for the doors to move. And right now we're looking for upgrades for our doors. So starting out, as you should already know, uh, your doors can be anywhere from down to weak to medium to strong to overcharged based on their color. On your first doors, it's preferable, even though you might get them, that you try not to burn your cells on 
inadequate upgrades. So, for example, here, since I have both of these prepared and ready, and I can just walk into the Guardian of Fire and go to the Fire Altar to get a Overcharged Rune, it wouldn't make much of a difference if I had gone in with Fire or Nature, since doors that are not at their maximum are going to be upgraded by the next tier based on that tier. So, if you have a normal door with just a white cell, it will instead, instead of upgrading immediately to red, it will just go to the next tier up. In this situation, we now have another repeat of the situation we had before. Drop the red in. Go into the Guardian. Get the altar to craft the runes and also get the cell. And then we're going to beeline straight for the portal. Now, the best way that I can describe how to treat the Essence Mine Portals as well as the Guardian Portals to enter the Altars is assume that all of the Altar Doors are tick negative. When you try to click on them, the game is going to be probably one to two ticks ahead of you, and even though it looks like you should make it in, you more than likely will not. Whereas the Guardian Portal for the Essence Mine is going to be tick positive or tick generous. It's going to give you the ability that even if it looks like it should be immediately closed, if it actively counts over to negative, the portal will remain open for at least one to two seconds worth of ticks and will allow you to place what you need to place. All right, center door is up and one of my guardians just died. So I'm going to dump the essence. Wait for a bit. Still didn't change. Want to wait for a bit to make sure that if you have a portal talisman that doesn't get consumed, if the next one would have literally been the door just to maximize your benefit. And we also got our talisman back anyways. We're, we're hella poggers right now. And go right back in and use this next one. Dump the maximum. And this will be your basic game loop while playing solo. Until you get to the point that you're going to be over 60 energy. Which we are not yet. But this at least gives me time to explain this detail rather than the post. Um, when you are doing solos. The solo method of playing Guardians of the Rift is much more beneficial to point scanning than it is towards fast experience. You get to control when you do and when you don't win if you don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed. The reason why this is an important detail to note is because inside of solos you have the easiest ability to complete a round but you also are very very likely to lose it if you are not careful. Monster generation does increase after 60 energy, so you always want to make sure that if you're going to clear, that you're going to clear with at least two guardians up and at least your center gate red. Maxed out is preferable, but you at least want it to be red. And you also want to do it with a cell in your inventory when you do so. reason why is because it then becomes a race against the clock and you preferably do not want to get timed out by the fact that you took too long on most returns should you not have a lot of time till your next essence mine portal you're going to craft up to your maximum and insert into your pouch this will at least cost you a full rotation which is why i like to do only a single normal inventory's worth not a craft up to maximum so that you can be able to get beneficial uh doors and cells off much sooner than usual. That and to try and maximize your ability to win, I would suggest trying to start the enrage timer once you actually have a beneficial overcharge door to use. And of course, you do not need to use magic imbue and catalyst altars because catalyst altars do not have a benefit. Can't make 
Can't make combination catalyst runes. Yet. <laughs> Jagex, please. Credit me for the good idea. Now, past the enrage timer, the spawns that will be coming out of the rift are going to be extremely dangerous. You do not want to be caught lacking with them. It's also the reason why we've been doing our maximum dumps. On this rotation, I'll actually be able to win this. Just going to dump the whole rotation. But since I have already won, since I have the clearing inventory here, I'm going to go in here and get up my maximum since I just ran out of uh, fragments to craft with. This is just uh, a victory lap things. You won't always be able to get to do this every round. Trying to look for a particular uh, altar that I want to go to. Daddy needs bur bursting runes. Not really seeing a good one. So I'll just go to an altar where I can create uh, points. Now that the round is complete, he will then start going through his normal timer. We're going to wait a few seconds. Because when a round ends, it will take all of the... Uh, normal things out of your inventory that it takes out of your inventory your uh, your cells and the guardian essence that you have yet to collect and then of course you have the 30 second grace period upon which to use all the rest of your runes I like to do this to make sure that I can get off the essence for the cells but the guardian stone is just Wasted. Walk out. And if you don't have a Red Word Abyssal Lantern, which I don't, I have you. You come back here, dump the runes that were left over, bring over your air runes, cast some PC contact. If you're on the Lunar Brook, which I suggest being on the Lunar Brook, just use anyone's house portals to swap inside their achievement gallery. Call the Dark Mage. Your air runes back after fixing your uh after you're fixing your pouches and then claim your rewards it's a fairly simple strategy and a fairly simple outpay doing this per hour can put you at i think the maximum i had was about anywhere between 67 on the low end when you do not have access to all of the altars to 100k experience an hour on the higher end with extreme focus you can do more if you simply do the mass rune strategy of not necessarily needing to do imbue and just going in crafting up to your essence and doing everything as quickly as possible uh i suggest doing a focus strategy to try and give yourself the ability to create combination runes because it will be beneficial not just towards making what you might need Maybe you need muds for crafting bone to peaches. Maybe you require lava runes. Maybe you need smokes. Maybe you need mists. In my particular case, I use steams to replace the cost of magic and view itself. So I'm simply casting off of these in the inventory. But I highly suggest doing this as the method of doing a very easy, easy moneymaker to try and make a little bit of cash as a skiller. It can be generally beneficial if you do so. You look over here uh, on a couple of play sessions to test the strategy. You can be able to loot a lot of rune cost directly from intricate pouch rewards. It is also a very general way to be able to produce some hard clue scrolls. And because you're on the Lunar Book, if you happen to make money through this or through other methods, such as combining this with the Lunar Book for Slayer, you can be able to use your Slayer Cash to fund your Kingdom of Miscellanea, and through Kingdom of Miscellanea, call them on the book, and never actually have to physically visit the Isles again, except to increase your approval rating. In terms of point distribution, as you can see up here, um, you will be making a lot of points between Catalyst and Elemental. 
You will struggle to try and keep up if you use the imbue technique, your elemental takes with your catalyst takes, unless you have access to more doors that give you access to more catalysts. As you should know, throughout the book, in runecrafting, you can only be able to access the altars that you have the level to craft at. When you first start out at level 27, which is when you will access Guardians of the Rift, Temple of the Eye will give you enough points to be able to access the minigame at 27. You will only be able to access up to the Cosmic Altar. So, using this here, it means you'll only be able to access the Guardian Altar for Fire, Earth, Water, Cosmic, Mind, Body, and eventually Chaos, I believe, is next on the list. Yes, Chaos at 35. So, the Death Altar, the Law Altar, the and the Blood Altar, and the Nature Altar, and the Chaos Altar will be locked away from you. For those players that are lacking this time period, there is a methodology to be able to abuse for this. And the way to do that is to have maple logs in your inventory. And the reason why you'll want to have maple logs over you logs is because you get burn effects for your lantern based on what your lantern is actually consuming for its fire. As you can see here, if you inspect my lantern, the U logs will increase your elemental and catalytic energy gained by 10%. If you extinguish and instead use maple, maple will increase your chance of pining portal talismans by 20%. This buff here in your lantern is extremely important if you are doing so at a lower level because. When you do not have access to the full altar rotation itself, you will not be able to go into the Guardian of Fire as often as you would like because it will be the only altar you have access to that has the ability to overcharge. The Fire Altar, the Blood Altar, and the Death Altar are the only overcharge altars in here. Next up for Strong being Law and Nature and Chaos and cosmic being mediums. Because of this on the catalytic altars, you're going to be ignoring the use of air, the use of mind, and the use of body, because these are weak. You do not want weak cells for production and use. The only use they have is in the beginning of the game, the exact beginning of the game, and no time after, unless you are in the enrage phase after 60%, at which point, it does not matter what altar you're using, you want to simply complete the round so you can cash in your points and you can also be able to upkeep and stay ahead of the damage that the minions will be doing to your gates and to the guardian. I hope this will be helpful to any person who reads and listens to it. And I hope that you will be able to come back here, listen along with it in case you feel that you might need more help. Contact me while I'm live or in my Discord, with the links of which will be below. And if you have any more further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if this guide helped you on your journey towards 99 Recrafting, please leave a like and suggest it to your friends. And tell me when you found it and how far you got after taking my advice. I have been Single Player Carl, and I will see you in the game. Bye, everybody. Happy travels. And happy crafting.